than their seventh ranked rushing offense to face an Aggie aerial attack leading the nation in pass yards per game under Chase Holbrook. Two whack teams with two vastly different offensive styles. It's a primetime Sunday night showdown. Number 18, Boise State and New Mexico State coming up next. Memorial Stadium in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Number 18, Boise State in town to take on the Aggies of New Mexico State in a rare Sunday night showdown between these two whack ball clubs. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, and welcome to Las Cruces. Well, the Broncos have been very successful here, but it has been more difficult to play the Aggies right here in Las Cruces. And, of course, the Aggies are hoping that they can maintain that kind of foothold here in this ball game tonight. With the conversation around the stadium, the first Sunday of the BCS standings has come out. And the Broncos at 6-0, and oh, hoping that they can run their string to 12-0 and oh, and have an opportunity to be one of those final BCS teams. Just take care of business. That's what the coaching staff is saying. Ed Cunningham joins me on the telecast tonight as usual. And Ed, boy, they certainly have got two guys offensively at quarterback with Zabransky and also at running back that could help them attain that lofty goal. When you watch Boise State, they're always one of the top teams in the country offensively. And a lot of times you think of them throwing it. Jared Zabransky, the senior, is playing very well, but not throwing it as much because of the sophomore running back, Ian Johnson. He's not the fastest guy on the field, but he is very patient, runs with power, added 14 pounds during the offseason knowing that he'd have to be the feature back. Ron, this guy's averaging over seven yards per carry. That's almost three quarters of a first down. And with New Mexico State throwing the ball a lot, I think he's going to get it about 40 times tonight. Hal Mummy and his staff now in their second year here in uh, this portion of the state of New Mexico. And I'll tell you, they have recruited and, boy, they have worked. And they are getting more and better athletes in here. In fact, testimony, they are number one in passing offense in the nation. Well, the teams that, even the teams that have beaten them have said, don't take them lightly because every week when you look at video, they get a little better and a little bit better. One of the reasons is their starting quarterback as well. We talk about recruiting. Chase Holbrook was an option quarterback outside of in the Dallas area in Texas. He threw for just over 500 yards as a senior. He's thrown for that nearly in a ball game so far in this air raid offense. Just a sophomore. The one thing that is so impressive about Holbrook, very accurate. And when you watch this offense of Hal Mummy, a lot of drag routes, a lot of crossing stuff. It's accuracy that counts. Get it, get it to your little receivers and let them run with the ball. Well, the third member of our telecast tonight, and we are very pleased to have her alongside with us. Let's go down to the sideline. Here's Heather Cox. Heather? Ron, all the buzz for Boise State is surrounding that BCS poll. Boise State is the highest ranked non-BCS conference school, which means they'd automatically qualify for a BCS Bowl if they finish in the top 12. Now, BCS pundits I talked to yesterday had Boise State projected at 13, and that was before three teams ranked ahead of the Broncos actually lost yesterday. Now, you've got to wonder if Boise State, since they came out at 15, might, perhaps is being hurt by the fact that they're the only team that didn't play yesterday. You've got to wonder if that hurts them. Now, moments ago, I talked to Coach Peterson and asked him his reaction to the rankings, and he said, I don't even know what they are. When I told him he was 15, he said, you know what? It doesn't matter if we don't take care of business. They've got six more teams to play to prove they deserve a shot, Ron. Well, Heather, you are excited. Boise and New Mexico State next. Trader Services and yellowbook.com. Quick, local, reliable. Search online at yellowbook.com. What a reminder, this telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. Jeremy, please. Beautiful shot of the mountains as we're about to have sunset here in this part of the Southwest. And Hal Mummy, second season here at New Mexico State. His record is 2-15. and 15, But I talked about how much recruiting he and his staff have done. And they're working very hard to change that situation. And on the other side of the field, in his first season, Chris Peterson. 
Six and oh, his record. This game, number seven tonight. And of course, their goal is just what we talked about. They want to go 12 and oh. And the weather here in Las Cruces tonight. Had rain yesterday, rain early this morning, but look at what the weatherman has provided for us. No chance of rain tonight here. The wind could be a factor. West at 14 miles an hour, very low humidity, only 46%. And the temperature is supposed to drop down to around 50 degrees tonight, but the time this ball game is over. New Mexico State attired in their crimson and white. As you take a look at those games I was talking about that uh, have been played here, 96, 98, and in the year 2000, 33-32, uh, 55-51, and 34-31. And it has not been an easy time for Boise, but they have won. No, and Boise State knows, looking at New Mexico State on film, this is not the team that went 0-12 last year, Ron. All of the players we talked to and the coaches said that they are seeing a new desire for New Positive, and his kids are starting to buy into his program. Well, something else we'll talk about over the course of the evening, a very veteran coaching staff. I mean, guys that are not just veterans Super Bowl in the grades. college yeah, wars. Absolutely. That's right. We're talking about NFL experience. As you look at Hal on the sideline, rare situation, but they are on the sun side of the field. Here comes the kickoff, and it's Dubois, who was the deep man, but it goes to the far corner, and is going to be taken at the one-yard line by Chris Williams, fastest man on the team, and he is going to be corralled on a very nice job by the special teams of Boise State. So there you see Holbrook, the youngster out of Hearst, Texas, played at L.D. Bell High School there. And he was not a pass oh, quarterback. No, he was an option. School. They ran the veer option, and Matt Mummy, who serves as the quarterback coach for his dad, went and found him through an old friend of theirs who was a high school coach in Dallas, said, you need to take a look at this young man. I think he can be a big-time college quarterback. What you're seeing right here is what you'll see all night. yards gained on the play. Here is the offense. They are third in the nation, led by sophomores, the quarterback Holbrook, wide receiver Chris Williams, who you have already seen on the kick return, and you'll see number 18, A.J. Harris, second on the team with 31 receptions. He is a key as far as their offense and one of their focal points. New Mexico State likes to go no huddle. They average a lot of plays a game. Straight ahead, it's Williams again. Not going to make the 20-yard line, and now they'll be faced with a third down at about five. Andrew Browning is the man who makes the tackle. And Boise State's defense, 12th in the nation. They've allowed only 12 and a half points of ball game. They have 11 interceptions. And the interceptions, Brooks with two, Hall with three, Skandrick with one, as well as Alexander Tadman with two, and Quinton Jones with one for that total of 11. Third down line to make the 23 going to take it the other way. Flag comes in, and they're going to get a first down by way of penalty. I believe that's going to be a personal foul grabbing the face personal mask. Personal foul, yes. face mask, number 31. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, Colt Brooks was tied up there with Polo Gutierrez, and as he reached around, Ron, you're absolutely right, got the head to spin around. Difficult when you're reaching. And didn't let go. It was because the head spun around. He just yes. held on to it for just a touch too long. Brooks, the do-all-everything linebacker, he will blitz. He'll drop into coverage. We'll even play some defensive end for new defensive coordinator Justin Wilcox. So, Woko in the backfield, number 35. He has been joined by Brandon Perez, who is a fullback type, but he tries to block for him this time. Short yardage. Woko on the carry for one to around the 35. Well, we'll take a look at New Mexico State's impact players. We saw Chris Williams early return the kick. A small guy at 155 pounds, very explosive, had a 96-yard touchdown catch last week against Idaho. And this will be the first time that this crowd gets to see Akeem Jala. He's played a little bit. He's a transfer from Miami, can really stretch the field. He's been bothered by a knee. Well, fakes the pass to the right, throws it back to the other side. Intercepted at the 48-yard line. And that's middle linebacker Corey Hall, who is finally going to be stopped on the far sideline at around the 26-yard line. Harris, intercepted by Corey Hall. Well, Corey Hall is the heart and soul of not just this defense, but of the entire team. Local guy, his fourth interception of the year, and this ball is just poorly thrown by Holbrook. Watching him in practice, 
and also on tape that's very unusual he was looking over the middle for A.J. Harris and just overthrew it in the hall who had dropped very deep into coverage Ron for middle linebacker and then trying to make a big play flips it to the cornerback Jones who's able to pick up a few more yards they are reviewing this upstairs and I'm sure it's to see whether that was a forward pass or whether it was backward They're not going to be able to uh, get the review because they have snapped the ball. And here comes the first run, which will be one of many on the night. And that's Ian Johnson, the sophomore out of San Dimas, California. The man that Ed has talked so much about. That's a gain of very close to 10 yards on the first play from scrimmage. Jared Zabransky on the season, 61% completion, over 1,000 yards. And the whole thing, Ron, he's not tied into his numbers this year. Last year he said, I was guilty of thinking about my numbers. Now we have such a good defense, such a good running game. I just need to control the ball. Option play. They come to the open side of the field. Coretta, who has just come into the ball game, is going to be hit and knocked down. And he may have the first down. From where they're spotting it, it's around the 16-yard line. And you can see one of the Aggie players is down and is shaken up on the tackle. Alex Bernard on the tackle. Alex Bernard is the man who made the tackle. And I believe it's Alex, yeah, who is uh, still down on the play. Let's take another look. Nice job of stringing this out. And when Zabransky goes to pitch it, Bernard is there. And I wonder if he just got his shoulder. Looks like maybe he took a knee into that shoulder neck area, maybe a stinger. And it's worth mentioning the defensive coordinator, Woody Woodenhofer. Defensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the 70s when they won Super Bowl after Super Bowl. And they're still they've starting to get some of the bodies on offense they want. But Here's Coach Woody. Woodenhofer is uh, doing everything he can with a bunch of young guys. They're playing a whole bunch of freshmen, a bunch of people out of position. And uh, it's been uh, a big task to get this defense moving. Alex Bernard is a local kid. He's from right here in Las Cruces, one of about four on the roster. He's a junior. He was a safety last year and was a starter, but uh, they liked him. They thought he was more at home playing at cornerback. So hopefully this will not be something so serious that he will have to go to the bench for the rest of the ball game. In fact, let's go down to Heather, and she has a report. Heather? Uh, Alex Bernard took a helmet to the hip, suffering a hip pointer right now. It is believed he will return to the game, guys. Okay, Heather. Ian Johnson, number 41, checks back in a tailback. And Marvin Betts, number 20, comes in at that left cornerback position. In the round. And that's Coretta, who they had moved outside with Ian Johnson coming into the ball game. And a, a little trickeration, if you will. McNanagle is the man who makes the tackle on the play. Boise offensively averaging almost 40 points a ball game at sixth in the nation. And the quarterback, Zabransky, says the offensive line is the best he's ever played behind. Clady, Miller, Daly, Cavender, and Woodruff. Andrew Woodruff, number 60, the big right tackle. And just like New Mexico State, the, the, these guys are very huge up front. But this is a veteran group of performers for uh, Boise State. Second down, let's call it eight. That's Putnam, the tight end, who was in motion. And they want to throw. Pressure from the, the left side gets it across his body. Throws it out of bounds. Defensively for New Mexico State. They are led by three seniors. The nose guard, Jeremy Weeks. Tim Monatical, number eight, the linebacker, first on the team with tackles. We mentioned his name just a moment ago with 41 stops. Uh, Nathan Nuttall is one of the linebackers, number 17, and Courtney Bryan, two interceptions to lead the team. And one thing that Woody Woodenhofer likes to do, he's a little undermanned. He likes to blitz in these situations. Would not be surprised if there's a quick uh, throw to the outside. Well, that's where they got yeah. it against the stack formation for the three wide receivers. And Legadu Nune is the man on the receiving end. He's a senior out of Portland, Oregon, Ed. I really liked what Jared Zabransky did right there. He did not give New Mexico State time to get set in their defense. Knowing that he was probably going to see pressure, he ran up, did not let them get a read on the snap count, and got it out to the outside. And I believe this is short. And they are bringing in the big bodies to go for it. And I think this is the right part of the field, the right part of the game after you get a turnover to go for it on fourth down. With the big offensive line run, veterans, 
Don't get too fancy. Lawrence Lance and they are seven of seven on third down conversions. Here they come to the line of scrimmage quickly. Ian Johnson, the lone setback behind the quarterback. That's Schumann, the tight end, who shifted over to the left. And they give it to the tailback. Big opening. 3-2-1. Touchdown, Boise State. But the interception and what happened thereafter, they made it look far too easy. New Mexico State's got to sit down and draw some X's and O's on the far sideline. Well, it was a bad throw by Holbrook to get this whole thing started, but it's this offensive line. Everybody in Boise is talking about how good this offensive line. And let's not forget, there's two guys, Pete Cavender and Ryan Keating, who are going to be starters that are not in there. So there's a few guys out of position playing very well. Extra point attempt to come from Montgomery. And the left footer knocks it home. And very quickly, the, with 9.41 left in this opening quarter, Boise has gone on the scoreboard first. And let's take one more look at that interception, which set up this touchdown. Picked off the middle linebacker, Corey Hall, the senior out of Glensbury, Idaho. We'll be right back. Came from nothing and redefined the American dream. I buried those cockroaches. His enemies wanted him dead. Shut up to my little friend. But Tony Montana doesn't die that easy. The world is yours. Rated M for Mature. Every dog passes today. Here it comes. Nice. Look at that. I could watch that all day. One more time? Sure. East Ohio State, SC Michigan. Then Auburn, West Virginia, Florida 6, Louisville and Notre Dame at 7 and 8. And the next eight, led by Texas, then Cal. Tennessee, Clemson, Arkansas, Oregon, Boise State in the number 15 position, Rutgers 16. And remember the new rule this year for non-BCS schools, finish in the top 12, you're in automatically. So Boise State, keep winning and hope that a couple of people there above you start falling off and you can move up. Shovel pass, get behind the line of scrimmage, Jeremiah Williams. And he's not going to get any gain out of that one. It's going to be a loss of a couple. Schleckaway is the man who comes in to make the tackle. You know, the one thing, Ron, I think a lot of people forget that when Dan Hawkins left Boise State, because it's just been same-same this year with a bunch of winning going on for Boise State, Chris Peterson had to replace almost the entire staff. There's only two guys on this staff that are in the same position they were in last year. Justin Wilcox came over from Cal and is doing a very nice job with this defense as the new defensive coordinator. They are very, very young. In motion, ball comes to A.J. Harris. Check it, Dubois, 19 rather than 18. And Dubois will go for short yardage as this Boise State defense is uh, not falling for anything, regardless of the gimmicks that uh, New Mexico State has tried to pull out so far. Corey Hall, the middle linebacker, who already has an interception, is the man who made the tackle there. I think what's helped, they played Hawaii. Boise State's already played Hawaii, and although it's not the same type of offense, it is, is a run and shoot, so they're used to a team that'll move the ball around through the air. Again, no huddle from the shotgun, third and ten. Holbrook looking, looking, going to be sacked at the nine-yard line. Heavy pressure, Dennis Ellis coming in, number 92. He is a senior out of Cleveland, Texas. And in fact, he's got the cheers that you hear. He's got a huge family here from Cleveland, Texas. Well, not much going on here except for your sophomore quarterback has to know that he can't stand back there forever. This is pretty good protection. This offensive line, awfully young. Now, Mommy said they're probably a year away from being in the weight room, being very good, but your quarterback's got to know to get rid of that ball. Kaufman 
Hunt stands to punt five yards deep in the end zone. Coming after him, wobbly spiral. And it's going to hit now, take a Boise bounce, and it's going to be touched dead. You see the beanbag go down at around the 40-yard line. So a short field again for Boise after a short kick. We'll take a timeout, 7 to nothing. When we return, we'll talk more about an ugly scene last night in South Florida. Hey, guys, what's up? Well, Chad, we want you to put an end to my circle, being able to choose the people you can call for free no matter what network they're on. It's ridiculous. What's this? Let's call it a little motivation. Guys, I can't end my circle. People love it. Besides, there's only like eight bucks in there. Only? <laughs> We're prepared to go to 10. My Circle, only from Altel Wireless. Now buy one slider and get a second one free. No, 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 no. It's too small. Auto claustrophobia. It affects more people than you think. But there's hope on the horizon, and it's called the Nissan Versa. Versa provides relief with best-in-class rear seat leg room. Versa keeps you going for over 400 miles on just one tank. Versa will save the world from auto claustrophobia, one driver at a time. Ask your Nissan dealer if Versa is right for you. Spell the word Bostaurus. Bostaurus. B O S T. Do you believe a starter team sweatshirt makes everything a little more competitive? Come on! A U R U S Bastaris. Correct. We do too. Starter, believe in it, baby. Be there in five minutes. Oh, and my parents are coming too. Introducing Red Zone Deep Cleansing Body Wash, the active formula with micro beads. Cleans deep down to the pore. I thought you said he was a fan. Old Spice Deep Cleansing Body Wash. Nothing cleans deeper. Sunday. It's all about the pigskin and laundry. But Sunday's also one day till Leonard faces a fearsome Chicago D on ESPN Monday Night Football. One day till the undefeated Bears take on the Cardinals at 8:30. Football Primetime is presented by Altel Wireless. Come and get your love. And in part by Nissan, proud presenter of the 2006 Heisman. Visit theheismanvote.com to cast your vote. Well, looks, looks mighty tasty there. Located in the heart of the chili capital of the world, Las Cruces is the home of some of the best and hottest Mexican food around, made from famous family recipes. First down, great field position for Boise. They already had one touchdown drive. Zabranski sets in the pocket, long, near sideline, wide open is number one, Rab, and he is going to be stopped. It'll be first and goal at around the six-yard line. And I mean, right now, they are making it look like child's play. Well, and Alex Bernard, who's the guy who got the helmet on the hip, comes in, and he actually stays on top of Rab. But this is just a wonderful underthrow by the quarterback. You know, Ron, you hear people say all the time, oh, the quarterback underthrew it. This is exactly when you underthrow it. You see man coverage, and if the cornerback is on top or in front of your receiver, the, the, the wide receiver is going to see it before the corner does. That's a good throw by a senior quarterback. 34 yards gained on the play. Sweep, Ian Johnson, left side, hit at the five, spins around, down to around the two-yard line, and it's going to be second down and goal. Boy, he goes forward all the time, doesn't he, Ron? Even when he's getting tackled. Richardson is the man who came over to make the tackle for New Mexico State. Clock runs with six minutes and 15 seconds left to play in this opening quarter. The Aggies need something good to happen to them right here to, if nothing else, force just a field goal. They don't need to, to give up still another touchdown uh, with less than half of the first quarter to play. And into the end zone easily is Ian Johnson for the score. So it's 13 to nothing, and Brad Lau, number 34, the senior fullback out of Boise, with an outstanding block to pave the way. Going right over the left side of that offensive line, and they're going to plow it down. There's the block. Yeah, and left tackle Ryan Clady did a good job. They were trying to shoot the gaps. He stopped the penetration, and that's just a walk-in. 
So Anthony Montgomery in to attempt the extra point, trying to make it 14 to nothing. And he does. And Boise does what a good team does when you're on the road, and that is take the crowd out of it, take care of business. They lead it 14 to nothing. We'll be right back. Sunset here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. They're down 14 to nothing. And a reminder, all night long, we'll be talking about college football. What happened yesterday? And as we head to week number seven, kickoff on the ground and recovered at the 28-yard line. Right now, let's go to Reese Davis in the studio for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Reese. And Ron, one thing we hope we never have to talk about again is this nasty, disgraceful brawl like Miami and Florida International had last night. Eight Hurricane players have been suspended. The lengths of the suspensions have yet to be determined by the school and by the ACC. Carol Owens had three touchdown catches against the Texans. Cowboys won it 34 to 6. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News all the time. Okay, Reese. On first down, quick out pass, complete. And that is to Chris Williams. And the fastest man on this football team. They try to get him the ball any way they can. And he's going to take it out to the 35. This is the greatest advancement that they've had. Best field position out the night in their third possession here. And good call by Hal Mummy. They just looked out of sorts those first two drives. I know their field position was bad, but that one, just get it out of your quarterback's hands to your quickest player. Again, if you just joined us, New Mexico State always a no huddle. And we're going to show you in a minute the average for everybody else per plays per ball game as he dumps this one over the middle incomplete. And the umpire's just thrown a flag, and I don't need to tell you that when that guy throws the flag, it's bad for the offense. Anyway, it is a situation where, there we go, call, uh, holding is the call. So it's going to be March 10 yards back, and it's going to be a second down and close to 15 yards for the Aggies to pick up the first down. And on a typical night, it's not a very bad deal for oh, the man, Aggies. Oh, the offense, number 16. Daniel Penley remains second. Polo Gutierrez is the man who is uh, charged with the holding. How many bunches? Look at this right here. Yep. They Last love season, 70 passes. This season for, for everybody, 64. They average almost 16 plays more a ball game because of the no huddle. And a lot of coaches complaining about the new timing rules. Hal told us the other day, said, guys, I haven't even noticed it. It doesn't even affect what we do. And they had one play, that, one game this year, they had 96 plays in the football game. Quick out pass, that one is too tall, trying to get Chris Williams again. And it'll be now third down. They still need to take it out to the 39-yard line to pick up the first down. And I think you're right, because Boise has hit them with, with a couple of good rights to the body already that they're a little bit out of sync a little bit in a hurry and the one guy that uh, we expected to see a little bit of tonight is Akeem Jala the transfer from Miami he's lined up in the slot right now right down here and this type of down and distance maybe right down the middle of the field there is no safety for Boise State now in the middle of the field we'll keep an eye on him big target and he gives him a vertical situation long pass got a man open and did he catch it yes Williams on the run and Chris will have the initial first down of the night by New Mexico State and a good job by that offensive line and this is zone coverage and that's the corner Jones who allows Williams to go underneath and the safety just can't get over fast enough 30 yards on the play of a third down and 13. Holbrook, blitz, pressure from the right side, and he had no place to go as he stepped up. And Andrew Browning is the man who will get credit for the sack. He is a senior out of Lake Oswego. So many seniors on this Bronco team, 25 seniors. This program, of course, Dirk Cutter did such an amazing job, Dan Hawkins to follow, and now Chris Peterson. Because they've done such a good job recruiting, they always have a lot of fourth and fifth year guys on the squad. You see Boise lining up what looks like a little bit late, but they're waiting for their signals as their coaches on the near sideline with the no huddle in New Mexico State. They've got to wait a couple of seconds. Jeremiah Williams takes it straight ahead here by Orlando Skendrick. 
and he'll be stopped for about a half yard gain and that's it. You see the headgear came off of Brandon Perez the redshirt freshman out of Sparta New Jersey. They got kids from all over the country don't they. Oh they're going everywhere it's like the French Foreign Legion to find kids to play here but very conservative call for the quote unquote air raid offense on second and 13. Third down quick snap they get it out to the near side to Harris and A.J. Harris fumbles the ball covered by Boise right at midfield. If you can believe it, they get the ball at midfield. This is going to be their worst starting position offensively of the night. Yeah, New Mexico State fighting for everything they can. They've lost 16 games in a row to Division 1A opponents and try just try to make anything happen. And Harris, he just never tucked the ball, Ron. My old, college, out, did my old college coach, Don James, used to say, never adjust the ball when you're running in traffic. That ball is to be locked away at all times, and Harris went to adjust it his arm, and it popped right out. Schleckaway is the man who came up with the recovery as a flag is down, and they're going to whistle this one to a halt. Fire to snap. Ball start on the offense. Number 60. Five-yard penalty. Base first down. Second penalty of the night against Boise, and they will look at a first down and 15. The first two drives, six plays, 26 yards. The second drive, three plays, 40 yards. So now they have a little more of a challenge, Ron. Have to go 55 if they want to score with this one. Yep. Here comes the pitch back, hit behind the line of scrimmage, and Ian Johnson is going to be thrown for a loss. Alex Bernard is the man who was out there to make the stop. And let's check on the sideline to Heather Cox. Well, guys, we heard Reese mention the fight that really shocked all college football fans yesterday between Miami and Florida International. Yesterday, the fight ensued during Miami's 35-0 win. Now, Coach Coker did announce that eight players have been suspended. He made the decision as to who would be suspended after reviewing the tape of the incident but hasn't determined the length of those suspensions. Coach Coker did say today, quote, I don't have many bad days. This was a bad day. Officials from both universities have issued a public apology. Florida International hasn't decided yet on any suspensions. Okay, Heather, thanks very much. On the field of play, Dryson James on the receiving end as a senior out of Phoenix, and he will have the first down for Boise. Very good toss by Zabransky that time, and it was Richardson who came over to make the hit on him. But uh, Boise, who is known as a running football team, has thrown the ball and thrown it very efficiently in this first quarter. This year, it hasn't really been much balance. Chris Peterson, who was the offensive coordinator on Dan Hawkins, elevated the head coach when Hawk left. And they were known for throwing it, but they had been running it. But they much more balanced tonight. Ian Johnson, straight ahead with the handoff, spins off one tackle, and then is going to be knocked down at the line of scrimmage. They're going to give him credit for one yard is Eric Perry, the strong safety, is there to make the tackle. And Boise State has been one of the top offenses for a very, very long time. Again, it started with Dirk Cutter, who's now at Arizona State, continued with Dan Hawkins. But it's that inventive offense, and a lot of this came out of Oregon. They were given a lot of leeway. Dirk Cutter, when he was offensive coach there, was given a lot of leeway to develop a lot of things, and they have a huge, huge variety of offense to choose from in this system. A lot of different mentors who actually come from basically the same system. Just different guys tweaking it near sideline got it complete and again pushed out of bounds here they'll say that the clock will continue to run and that's Nune Legadu Nune the senior out of Portland Oregon his second catch of the night and boy they're going after Bernard now number 36 on the near side of the field they know he's got the hip problem yeah. and that's exactly what Brian Harson, the new offensive coordinator and Chris Peterson the head coach are seeing they saw this young man go out with a hip pointer when he made a tackle on Johnson and they're going right at him and Zabransky doing a nice job getting it over the outside linebacker. That's James in motion. And they give him the ball. Turns the corner to 20. 15. And it is knocked out about hard. Just short of the first down. At around the 14 and a half yard line by Courtney Bryan. What a block by Brad Lau. Watch the finish. 
by the fullback on the outside of this play. He locks up right there on 27, gets him to the outside, and Lau, he's a very good receiver out of the backfield, but a tenacious blocker, that time working one-on-one -on, -one on Courtney Bryant and just didn't give up. When we asked about him, he said simple. He's a bruiser, and Lau <laughs> proved it right there. With a second down and short, and they go straight ahead. Johnson, big opening inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal at the seven-yard line. Eric Carey finally made the tackle on Ian Johnson. You know, when we spoke this week with Ian Johnson about his running style, he just loves the patience. Just little moves. You know, Ron, guys who are good at running between the tackle, they don't make big flashy moves. It's just one little step. Remember Kenny Irons earlier in the year? We saw Kenny with Auburn. He does that too, where it's just one one step is the cutback. They're not, they're not slowing down. They're moving forward the whole time. Grab in motion. But they give it to Johnson. Blocker in front. Good job of the defense, and then they soften just a bit. He'll finally get it inside the five-yard line. Derek Richardson, number 22, is there to make the tackle for the Aggies. And this offensive line for Boise State allows this type of offense. Ian Johnson is, is a fine back, but it's this offensive line. Clady Miller, Daly, Cavender, Woodruff. This is a very good bunch, and the new uh, line coach, Sean Kugler, who came back to the college level from five years in the NFL, has really made this a physical group. Second down and goal. The ball at around the four-yard line. And a fade route in the corner. Too tall for Gerald Grab. Well, that was the first bad throw of the night. Zabransky let that ball go out of bounds. If you're going to throw the fade, the only way you can get a touchdown with a fade is if the ball lands somewhere in bounds where your receiver is going to catch it. That time it just got a little bit away on Jared. Ricky Brockle checks into the ball game. A freshman who's out of Phoenix, number 40. And they break the huddle and come to the line of scrimmage. The Aggie faithful trying to group it up here, make a little noise and hold him to a field goal rather than a touchdown. Johnson, right side. Here, breaks the tackle, takes it into the end zone, and it's a 20 to nothing ball game for Boise State. Tad Miller, number 66, with a very good paving block on the play. You know, I saw Johnson run against Oregon State earlier in the year. He got 240 yards, and I was just so impressed with his balance and fighting through arm tackles. It looks so many times like he's going to be tackled for a yard or two, and as his body starts going to the ground, he does whatever he can to continue to lunge forward. We've already seen that four or five times this evening. Here comes Montgomery with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. It's a 21 to nothing ball game. You could see on that replay just a moment ago, the guys that never get a lot of credit, but number 66, Tad Miller, they had him pulling out on the play. He threw the block that paved the way, and it's three running touchdowns for Ian Johnson in the ball game. And we have 34 seconds left in the opening quarter. On the defense, number 27, that penalty is refused. But we'll take the result of the play. Point after is good. You know, Ron, I mentioned uh, Sean Kugler, the new offensive line coach. Spent five years with the Detroit Lions, was an offensive lineman himself, spent time in the NFL and the World League. And he's given his offensive line much more responsibility this year. They used to do all of the calls came from the quarterback for their protections. He said, no, no, no. At the NFL level, it's the center and the guards who call the protection. He's given this offensive line a lot more responsibility in the strategy part of the game, and they've picked it up very well. Well, plus the fact that I, I would think that that'd be a recruiting tool as well, that you're learning everything you're going to need to know if you're good Absolutely. enough to play on the next level. Well, and they've got a guy, Ryan Clady, who's just a sophomore, who we watched on film the other day. This 6'4", 315-pound guy who can move. Yeah, he'll probably get a chance. Yeah, they say he is going to be the next great one for Boise. Here comes the kick. And this one is going to be five yards deep and will not be returned. Well, Monday Night Football is on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Rex Grossman has the Chicago Bears flying high early this season. And the monsters of the Midway appear to be back. And they keep it up as they visit Matt Leinart and the Cardinals. Also, it's available in high definition on ESPN HD and Spanish on ESPN Deportes. Monday Night Football. Clock runs down to 20 seconds, and that is the play clock. 
I don't think that uh, New Mexico State is interested in uh, letting the clock run out and uh, going to the second quarter, though. They want to go ahead and get one more snap. Holbrook dumps it out of the backfield. That's A.J. Harris thrown just a little too high. And if he had caught it, <laughs> he had uh, David Shields, the linebacker, coming right after his head. Yeah, the turnovers have been the story. Holbrook had the bad throw earlier, and then the fumble by A.J. Harris. But this is not the young man that we saw on film or at practice the other day, Ron. Holbrook right now looks like he's playing a little bit tight. He's got to loosen up. So second down and 10. Eight seconds left in the first quarter. Gets this one right across the middle. And got it complete to Brandon Allen. And Allen is just short of the first down at the 29-yard line. That, that is the final play of the first quarter. Excuse me. And that's exactly what they need to do, Ron. They need to get those drags, and they need to be accurate so guys like Allen have a chance to run after the catch. So we'll take a timeout. That's the end of the first quarter. It's been all Boise so far. 21 to nothing. But let's see when we come back if the Aggies can get on the board. the 2006 PGA Tour on ESPN. It's too small, car's too small. Auto claustrophobia, it's taken a devastating toll, but its days are numbered thanks to the all new Nissan Versa. Versa treats small car symptoms with best in class interior space. Now this is roomy. Versa lets you be carefree and hands-free with Bluetooth technology. I like that. Versa will help you take control of auto claustrophobia today. Ask your Nissan dealer if Versa is right for you. Oh, you're so cute. Pressure. Enemy of engines. Enemy of pressure. Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic with adaptive molecules that continually join forces to help conquer pressure. Not just oil, Pennzoil. I think it happens to a lot of guys over 50. See, I was always going. Going during the movies and hating to stand up. Going during a presentation and hating to stand out. Features for you this afternoon. And once I got there, I had trouble going. And I was going three times a night. I said to my doctor, I have a going problem. He said, you have a growing problem. It's not your bladder. Your prostate is growing. See, I had an enlarging prostate. My doctor prescribed Avidart. Most medicines only treat symptoms. Avidart, with time, actually shrinks the prostate and improves urinary symptoms. So I can go more easily when I need to go and go less often. Only your doctor can tell if your symptoms are from an enlarged prostate and not a more serious condition such as prostate cancer. So have regular prostate exams. Avidart is for men only. Women should not take or handle Avidart due to the risk of a specific birth defect. Tell your doctor if you have liver disease. Rarely sexual side effects, tenderness, or swelling of the breast can occur. Call your doctor today. Avidart for your growing prostate. Problem. Nothing like shopping for a little fresh produce. What do I want? College football insight or a Cobb salad? ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Well, there's only one place to be on game day. Sadly, life can't be all about football. Yes, sometimes a missus wants a walk-in closet. The kids want a clubhouse, and you want a room big enough to escape it all. At the Home Depot, we've got the materials and know-how to help you lay a foundation, hang drywall, and turn your home into the ultimate football-watching environment. So you can watch more game day. 21 to nothing, thanks to that gentleman. Three rushing touchdowns, Ian Johnson. And how about this? Of the 18 plays in the first quarter, 16 of, B, of uh, Boise's plays were run in Aggie territory. And without the penalty, all 18 would have been. Quick pass, Cleaver, near sideline, tackled at the 31-yard line, and that'll be enough for the first down. We'll take a look at the undefeated teams, and all night the theme is going to be the BCS because, of course, Boise State, the final remaining non-BCS school that has a shot to go to a BCS bowl game. And they're going to need a couple of those teams around them to start losing. Rutgers, who is now behind Boise State in the BCS, if they continue to win, may end up leapfrogging the Broncos. So it's a first down from the 32. Quick screen. Jala, and Jala turns the corner, going to be shoved out of bounds. 
fans on the near sideline. This time last year, Akeem was playing at Miami, and I remember we did a ball game down there, and I got to talk to him on the practice field on Friday and ask him how he liked the system. He said, I love it. Now, he's had a knee injury. He had to have surgery in August. Full speed there. And no. he, his uh, head coach said, no, he's not full speed. But when he gets full speed, he is a big target at 6'3", 205 pounds, and he gives you vertical uh, problems for the defense. Pass caught, stepping out of bounds. That'll be a first down by Kenneth Buckley. Well, and Buckley's a guy who's gotten a lot of time because of the injuries to Jala and also the senior Tim Tolbert. And that's exactly what Chase Holbrook needs to do. He needs to get into a little bit of rhythm, Ron. In those first couple of series, he just looked a little tense. Now moving around in the pocket a little bit. He's a very athletic guy. Remember, an option quarterback in high school, so he can move around and throw it. So it's first down at the 45, and this is the best field position that they have had offensively. Shovel pass. Jeremiah Williams turns it up. That one doesn't go for very much. Maybe a gain of one. Well, you were talking about uh, Holbrook playing at L.D. Bell High School outside of Dallas, and there was a couple other quarterbacks in that area, Graham Harrell and Chase Daniel, who were putting up huge numbers. Chase was not putting up huge numbers. He was running the option, averaged under 55 yards per game. And this year he's averaging 440. It's, this is a whole different. And it's amazing that Hal Mummy and his son Matt saw something in this young man. And it's paid off. Backside pressure throws the ball short, and he is uh, fortunate that that did not get intercepted as Colt Brooks was coming from the offside on a linebacker blitz and hit him just as the ball was thrown. Nobody else in a white jersey was there, though, when it falls uh, harmlessly down at around the 50. So it's third down, and they've got to take it to the Boise 45-yard line if they are going to continue this drive. And remember, New Mexico State loves to go for it on fourth, so Boise State can't think up, give up five or six here, because once they go past midfield, New Mexico State's liable to go for it. Again, the no-hutter, shotgun, Holbrook, good protection this time, wins his pass, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Dubois. Derek was trying to watch his feet as well, the sideline. Yeah, he lost. And it's still a ball I guess he should have caught. Yeah, this is a wonderful throw by Holbrook. The safety was coming underneath, and this ball thrown right on the spot, and Dubois... He needs to come down with that ball run. You can't, you cannot throw it much better. Holbrook finally finding a rhythm. So Kaufman in to punt. Kaufman back to punt. Uh, Tadman is the deep man. Marty standing at around the 10 yard line. Good kick away this time. Wobbly spiral. No fair catch made at the 13. Comes to the open side of the field. And 25, 30 steps out of bounds. Didn't even realize he stepped out at the 33-yard line. So we'll take a timeout. 41 on the kick, 20 on the return. When we come back, the curse of being number two. That when we return. At your Dodge dealer, it's all about the best in American and German engineering and design. And now, during the 2006 model year end clearance, get 0% financing for 60 months on 2006 Grand Caravan. With stow-and-go seating and storage and a five-star government crash test rating. Or get 0 for 60 on Durango with the best interior room in its class. So hurry into your Dodge dealer today. During the Dodge model year end clearance, get 0% financing for 60 months on Grand Caravan and Durango. Hurry, this offer ends soon. Don't think of them as tools. This is not a saw, it's a deck. So we can grill out. And this, this is a shelf for our vacation pictures. And this, okay. this, okay, really? The Home Depot Tool Event. Top brands, unbeatable prices. Like the innovative Ryobi One Plus system. One 18 volt battery powers all 20 tools. So this is my nice clean garage, right? The Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. Yeah, I was just, just back there in the woods, came out through those pines. There it was, and it just took off right back over there and was gone. I tried to get my camera out to take a picture, but you can't see anything on it. I've never seen anything like it. I want one. Hampton, we love having...
having you here. Hey! So we are back 21 to nothing. Boise leading New Mexico State. Uh, the Auburn Tigers came back from a six-point halftime deficit scoring on a blocked punt and a last play fumble return, making a pivotal late interception to defeat the Gators 27 to 17, leaving the Southeastern Conference without an unbeaten team. And there you see the ball picked up and taken in for the touchdown, and it's 27 to 17. Auburn wins that one. So, AP poll this week, number two. Texas lost to Ohio State, Notre Dame to Michigan, Auburn lost to Arkansas, and it was Florida falling to Auburn yesterday. And now it's the Wolverines yeah. who get to sweat that position. They're going to Iowa this coming Saturday. Play action, he faked it to Johnson. He's going to throw this one. They had a man open. And the ball is taken away by Eric Carey. This ball just slightly overthrown by Zabransky, and Nene cannot get a hold of it. And the strong safety carry who came up in coverage stayed on the ball and made a nice play on it. A little bit of a gift there, Ron. Maybe this will be something to get New Mexico, New Mexico State going. Nune could not hold on to the football, and a nice reaction. And this is the best field position by the Aggies in the ball game tonight at the Boise 31 yard line. Quick out pass. Chris Williams inside the 25 and it's going to be shoved out of bounds at the 21. And I believe that's the longest gainer on a play tonight of 10 yards plus. What a nice job of designing plays for Chris Williams. 5'8", 155 pounds, almost quit high school football because they just weren't using him enough. Ended up as a running back with over 2,100 rushing yards, but knew that he was going to be a receiver and loved how Mummy's offense. That's why he ended up here, the first guy that Mummy recruited when he got the job. So from the shotgun, looking, looking. Forced that one and is very lucky he did not have an interception. Cleaver, the intended receiver, but it was Corey Hall who already has a pick who got a hand on it and he tried to force it between two defenders. And Kyle Gang, the weak side outside linebacker, just read the eyes perfectly, came in. Probably should have made that interception. He looked like he had it in his hands and one of the best offenses in the country struggling here tonight. Only 56 yards tonight, third in the NCAA at uh, 502.6 yards per ball game. Romaka, number 47, into the ball game, a senior out of El Paso. He is a blocker. This pass overthrown, A.J. Harris, the intended receiver on the near sideline. And it'll stop the clock at 12.37 in the first half. Quentin Jones is uh, the guy in the cover position. Well, they've had some plays there, Ron. And either receiver's not making plays or the quarterback overthrowing or underthrowing. Things are just not in sync right now for Hal Mummy's offense. He'll keep calling it. He's not afraid. I mean, Hal Mummy's been in a lot of these ball games with this offense. But things just not smooth right now for New Mexico State. So Chase Holbrook looks at a third down and 10. He needs the 11-yard line of the Broncos. Throws it to the motion man, and Harris never even turned around. Holbrook had to get rid of it. He was under some stiff pressure. And let's see, they're going to go for a field goal? or the, Yeah, that's what they're going to do. This is old Matt Pratt, the sophomore out of Blooming Grove, Texas, will come in to attempt the field goal. Pratt has three kicks blocked so far this year. Boise State's coaching staff promise you they're going to bring pressure right over that left side. This is a 38-yard attempt from the right hash mark. Look at all those bodies in there, Ron. That's exactly where they're going to push. Ball is down. Kickoff in plenty of time, and he missed it. Wide left. He yanked it, and the field goal attempt is no good. So let's take a timeout. Boise 21. And the home folks, the Aggies and the Mexico State Nonson tackled it to 25. And now here is tonight's game track presented by Hampton Inn. Well, the whole game is hinged on turnovers for New Mexico State. The first pick by Corey Hall. 
then of course you're just going to continue to see number 41. This is a really special background. Three rushing touchdowns tonight. Two of those coming after New Mexico State turnovers. Pretty good balance right there. Oh, yeah. Putting his arm down and maintaining and picked up two more yards and the touchdown. Second down and five. And here he is starting his way across the 30. Has five, has 10. Counted off at about 13 to 14 yards as uh, Richardson comes over to make the tackle. The boy, Ian Johnson, not what you would call a really flashy runner, but just extremely efficient. What an excellent job of reading the block of Cavender. Cavender goes and reaches his guy inside, and so Johnson bounces it to the outside of that. Cavender, when he comes across, Ron, is looking for a kick out, but because the defender came inside and he had to hook him, good vision by Johnson. Johnson, 11 carries, 53 yards, three touchdowns. It's below his seven yards per carry, but five is not bad. <laughs> yeah, they'll take it. And then the ball game is Denton. And Denton is going to take the ball close to the first down, up around the 48-yard line. And Peter Cavender with a really good block on the play. Top smart player, formerly a center. And uh, they have him playing right guard. And he was out there paving the way for number 35, Brett Denton. Well, this offensive line for Chris Peterson. They lost a great one last year. Darren College was a four-year starter at left tackle, second round by Green Bay. Ryan Clady, who started as a freshman on the right side, has moved over to the left side and hasn't missed a beat. So they're going to have a measurement here, and the chain gang has to come all the way across the field. Clady out of Rialto, California, at 6'4", 315 pounds. And uh, extremely mobile. And you can see here the yellow line and how accurate it is. That is definitely a first down. Remember when, when we first started using those li lines, Ron, they'd be off by about half a yard. They've uh, gotten so I, much better. I don't remember them being, I don't remember them ever being off that far because they're they're done by computer and they're set up two days ahead when everybody else sets up. Uh, well, on. here's a reminder. Next Saturday, college football primetime on ESPN 745 Eastern. Two surprise teams in the ACC with the Georgia Tech and Calvin Johnson looking to remain perfect in the league as they take on a tough Clemson team anchored by James Davis. College football lives here. Johnson back at the running back spot, breaks it open, 40, 30, 25, 20, and it'll be a first and 10 at around the 17-yard line, and Richardson makes the stop. And he's having to make way too many tackles in this ball game as Ryan Putnam, the tight end, with a paving block. Well, they run so many different formations, and they use four, sometimes five tight ends and fullbacks in the game. And that time, Putman was lined up in a wing H-back position, knocks a man out. And when your running back doesn't have to make cuts until he gets to the secondary, it's going to be a long night, Ron. Brett Denton is the man who checks back in at tailback, replacing Ian Johnson after that long run. Good for 35 yards on that last carry. So now that average is going to be up over seven. Option play, pitch back, ball is on the ground, recovered New Mexico State at the 18-yard line. And Denton never got a handle on that one. Richardson on the recovery. Well, it looked to me like it hit Denton right in the hands. Zabransky, this is a speed option down the line of scrimmage. It looked like a clean pitch. Denton took his eye off it, Ron. He saw Biamonte, the corner, coming up to hit him, and he took his eye, tried to one hand. Excuse me. That was Courtney Bryan, the senior cornerback, coming up to tackle the pitch man, and Denton just took his eye off it. So let's see if the Aggies can do something with the turnover here. Boise has 14 points off turnovers in this first half of play. First down and 10. About to go under 10 minutes to play in his opening half. Stepping up in the pocket, backside pressure, throws the ball, got it complete, and there is Akeem Jala. You know, you mentioned, Ron, that he was at Miami last year. His mother was they're from New Orleans. His mother was a victim of Katrina and had to move to El Paso for some medical treatment. The NCAA allowed him to transfer. There she is, Letha. Letha Jollop. And because of that, for people that said, well, you saw him play in Miami last year, why did he not have to sit out? There was a special waiver given by the NCAA because of his mom's health. 
mentioned it to El Paso. He called Coach Mummy and said, hey, I want to come here and play. Brandon Allen on the receiving end. I don't know if he's got the first down or not. He is right in the vicinity. And let's check down on the sideline with Heather Cox. Heather? Well, guys, the most ironic part of Akeem Jala's story is actually when he was not happy at Miami, he decided to transfer to a 1AA school so that he'd be immediately eligible. So he actually contacted Hal Mummy at Southeastern Louisiana. But about a week later, Coach Mummy got the job here. And Hakeem thought that a shot was done. He was going to stay at Miami because he didn't have any more eligibility. But then things worked out with the NCAA. Long story short, he and Mummy have reunited. Yep, that they have. And I think his stay will be a popular one here. He is really an outstanding ball player. As you watch A.J. Harris catch that pass and uh, pick up the first down. I thought Boise was offside on the left side of the line. I thought that maybe jumping prematurely was Colt Brooks, but there was no flag on the play. Now Money, who started the football program at Southeastern Louisiana three years ago, came here, and a lot of those inroads they made, especially in Louisiana recruiting, they're still using out here in Las Cruces. Holbrook comes up. He's going to take a snap under center, right over the middle to Cleaver. That's weird. <laughs> and uh, the tackle will be made at the 41-yard line. Doesn't that look strange when you see Holbrook under center? And that was something he, he saw. Holbrook calls 60 to 70 percent of his own plays. They give him the formation, and he calls the plays. Obviously saw something from Boise State and knew he could get a quick one to his tight end. 21 to nothing, 8.50 left to go until halftime, Boise. But the Aggies driving, pass into the flat. There's John up the sideline, and the second man came over to make the hit. Understand one thing, if he gets to the outside and there's not a second man there to make the hit, you don't have to chase him, he's gone. And this is the speed guy that Hal Mummy needs. You know, the air raid offense is not built on stretch routes, but you still have to have guys who can get down the field. This is just a nice outcut. You can see he's still not top end. No, he's, uh, he's, he's a much faster guy. He had that uh, knee surgery. Still he not tried quite. to tell uh, a lot of people that he had a sore knee. And they said, you have, uh, like, tendonitis. Well, then they found out he needed to have the, some surgery done. And that's the reason he's so slow in getting back. Got this one to Harris. AJ turns the corner, 45 40, and that'll be enough for the Aggie first down. What I think it will, now they have said he stepped out of bounds at around the 42, and it's going to be very, very close. It is enough for the first down, we're told. Great job by Holbrook getting the snap and then getting out of the way of pressure. But those are the types of throws a quarterback in this system has to make. He hit AJ Harris right in the hands. And here also is how this offense is supposed to work. Boise has had him in a phone booth, so to speak, all night. Got him spread now, out. Once you mm -hmm. get him spread out and the quarterback's moving, you got somebody on the run catching the ball laterally, then you kind of stir things up a little bit, and that's what they've done. First down, they're down 21 to nothing, but hoping they can put a touch on the board here. Got this one to Cleveland. Nice defensive play. Hit immediately as he makes the catch at the 40, and in fact, it'll be just inside the 40. And it was Tristan Patton, the freshman out of Los Angeles, who was right there to make the tackle. You know, I was talking to Matt Mummy, who is the quarterback's coach for New Mexico State, and he said that Chase Holbrook, of all the quarterbacks that Hal Mummy has ever had in this system, going back to his days at Iowa Wesleyan, Valdosta State, and Kentucky with Tim Couch, he's farther ahead in command of this offense than any of them ever were. On this drive, 43 yards, and he's perfect. Seven of seven. Pressure off the corner. Got a man wide open, complete for the first down. And a lot more is Chris Williams. And they finally will force him out of bounds at the 17-yard line. You know, all those connections we were talking about with Oregon on the Boise State side, there's an interesting connection with Chris Williams. He went to the football camp at Texas Tech University and thought, you know, this is a great offense. I can play in this. Well, remember that Mike Leach was an assistant for Hal Mummy all of those years at Iowa Wesleyan at Valdosta State in Kentucky, brought the same offense, and when he came here, he knew he was home. So, deepest penetration of the night by the Aggies. Quick pass, it goes to Harris again. Tries to turn it upfield, and it's going to be tackled from behind at the 11. That's Kyle Ging, the sophomore out of Phoenix, who was there. The coaches say he's very undersized, but that Ging is a very smart player, and they like having him in the defense, even as a young guy. 
Well, you hit it right on the head, though, Ron. They, they're starting to get these guys having to run. And when, yes. when your outside linebacker has to be that far out from the line of scrimmage, this is exactly what New Mexico State wants Boise State to have to do. Second down and five. And on not many occasions have they played ahead of the chains this first half. Pass right over the middle, incomplete. Could not hold on to Ishjala, and there was a flag down. Boy, Jala wanted pass interference, Ron, and I'm not so sure he shouldn't have gotten it. Skandrick is the man who uh, was there to make the play. An eligible downfield is what it looks like here. on the offense number one he was covered up on the line uh, that's what i was going to say yeah. he had, had to be covered there's no way you could line would have a lineman in a situation like that no there's no way that they, they let's go ahead and freeze it well they said number one i think they're calling jala this man's on the line of scrimmage on the outside so he is covered up it, it's just like jala they said number one. There was no number one on the field. I think they got Jala because yeah. the, the wide receiver on the outside was on the line of scrimmage. And he did get hit before the ball got there. Backside pressure, but he gets the pass off. And that's uh, Jeremiah Williams, and he'll take it to the 11-yard line. And now it's going to be third down for the Aggies, and they definitely are in four-down territory here <laughs> as Tristan yeah. Patton made the stop for Boise. Well, how Mummy is always going to think about going for it on fourth down. And so if you're Boise, State, you have to think about pressing. Come up, play a little bit tighter. They've been playing way off, Ron, and I think that's playing into the hands of New Mexico State. Perfect this drive, 10 of 10. Again from the shotgun, steps up, got a man over the middle. He's got it, first and goal. New Mexico State, that's Cleaver. Nick Cleaver, a junior out of San Diego, he was a safety. They moved him to tight end. Had over 100 yards against Hawaii. Such a good athlete. He put on about 20 pounds to go to tight end, but as a safety, he's got the ability. He can walk away from the line of scrimmage. That time, he was in the slot, and it really looks like Chase Holbrook's found a groove, Ron. Well, you see the formation. That's Brandon Perez, the fullback from the 38. Holbrook, 11 of 11, 79 yards. Gives it to Williams right up the middle. 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Jeremiah. And the Aggies are on the board. Martinez and also Fairley. The left tackle in the center with really good blocking on the play. Well, the Boise State coaches said that everyone says New Mexico State can't run it. Well, it's not that they can't run it. They just don't run it a lot. And in this offense, when you do run it, you need productivity. And on the two-yard line, a productive run is a two-yard run for a touchdown. I think that's Polo Gutierrez, who is uh, the injured player. He's the right guard, a redshirt sophomore out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Not a whole lot of depth on this offensive line run. And Gutierrez, who was a defensive lineman last year, I moved over in the spring. I think that Bolin is the man who will come in because they said Bolin would be man. the backup, the sixth man yeah. at either center or at guard. And you see Polo's running off the field now. He looks as though he feels better. But we'll uh, keep an eye on that. It wouldn't be in the ballgame now because of the deep snapper. Bolin wears number 63. We'll just have to check on the next offensive series. Matt Pratt tries to make it a 21 to 7 ball game. And the kick is up and through. So Boise has 14 points off turnovers in the first half. And now the Aggies have seven points off turnovers. Here is that fumble and the recovery made by Richardson. Let's take a timeout. New score 21 7 Boise. your Dodge dealer, it's all about the best in American and German engineering and design. And now, during the 2006 model year-end clearance, get 0% financing for 60 months on all 2006 Dodge trucks. Get Durango with the best interior room in its class. Or grab 0 for 60 on Dakota. Or Ram 1500, best in durability with available Hemi power. So hurry into your Dodge dealer today. During the Dodge model year-end clearance, get 0% financing for 60 months on all 2006 Dodge trucks. Hurry, this offer ends soon. Sunday, it's all about the pigskin and laundry and 
some yard work. But mainly, it's about the pigskin. And maybe you should clean the garage while you're at it. But Sunday's also one day till tomorrow. And tomorrow, rookie Matt Leinart faces a fearsome Chicago D on ESPN Monday Night Football. One day till the undefeated Bears take on the Cardinals at 8.30. So finish your chores today, because tomorrow is only about the pigskin. Seriously. It all happened when we started eating at Subway restaurants. That's when I first developed a fat wallet. The more we ate there, the more we saved. And the more we saved, the fatter my wallet got. The $2.49 daily special at participating Subway restaurants. Get the featured regular six-inch sub of the day for only $2.49, made right before your eyes on freshly baked bread. I try to keep it out of people's way, but it's hard. It's just more of him to love. I don't deserve you. Hey, Dad? Yeah? Do you think maybe I could drive the truck? On one condition. You name it. Hey, there's that girl you like. Hi! That boy driving. Hey, great, she's got a camera phone. Jeez! The Toyota Tacoma. Always rugged and powerful, even when you aren't. Right now, get $750 cash back on a new Tacoma at your Valley Toyota dealers. Toyota, moving forward. And we are back 21 to 7. 18th ranked Boise State on top. But how Mummy's ball club, very impressive on that last drive. That's how the offense is supposed to look. We were talking during the timeout. They don't call it the air raid for uh, no reason at all. 11 passes, but the one rush, that's the one that counted. Pratt with the kickoff. Going to be taken at the three yard line by Quentin Jones. 20. Going to be tackled at the 24. Let's go down to the sideline and uh, let's check in with Heather. Heather? Ron, it was an emotional offseason for the Aggies. Sean Alea Pepe, who is a rising star for New Mexico State, was shot and killed July 8th in a fatal drive by shooting. Sean was in Long Beach visiting his California. They memorialized his locker. He was known as a leader. His teammates call him loyal and humble. And his teammates honor him this season with a Superman patch on their jerseys. Now, to date, no arrests have been made, but a tragedy like this certainly reminds all of us how to put things into perspective. Wow. Thanks, Heather. Nice job. First down from the 24. And this is going to be Ian Johnson. Ian is going to go for a little shorter trip on this one. Only about two and a half yards as Maurice Murray is there to make the tackle on him. Maurice, a junior, and he is another California kid. He's out of Long Beach. You know, you were mentioning at the top of the game how hard Hal Mummy and his staff have been recruiting. And uh, this defense, like the offense, very young. Sophomores and freshmen across the board. And they look a little different on defense right now after being able to go on the sideline and make some adjustments. Denton back in the ball game, and I'm glad to see the coaches showing trust in him. They throw the ball out to him, complete 25, 30. He's going to have the first down. He'll fight this one all the way out to around the 38-yard line. He's the young man that fumbled that pitch a while ago. A lot of times coaches will lose you on the bench for a series or two, and there's nothing that builds confidence any more, any quicker than the, what the staff has shown right here in confidence in him. You know, I think Coach Peterson is doing exactly what the coaches before him have done at Boise State. He trusts the players, so the players trust him. You know, last year they had three senior running backs. They knew Ian Johnson was special, but all of those seniors got to play. Johnson still ended up with over 600 yards rushing, but it was the loyalty to those guys that gives loyalty back. Johnson, big opening, has five, has 10, 12 and 13 yards. Boy, he is really stacking up the yardage tonight. Richardson making the tackle. I don't know how many tackles Richardson has tonight out of the secondary. We know he has a fumble recovery, but he has had a whale of a ball game. But he's not the man you want making all those tackles. Boy, they are just gashing the defensive front for New Mexico State. They line up at a couple of different fronts, a 3-4. They'll reduce and run a four-man front. But right now, the offensive line for Boise State, now they're as good as advertised. Ryan Clady with an excellent block on that last play. Schumann, the senior out of Eagle, Idaho. There was nobody around, number 91. And he is tackled by McManigal. Well, watch Schumann, the tight end, after he releases. He gets into the middle of the field. 
And Ron, watch how long he's standing there. I'm telling you. Now he doesn't. He doesn't make a fuss. You know, a lot of guys are going to raise their arms. He just sat down very calmly and figured, you know, that that senior's going to find me eventually. I'll just sit back here and wait for it. Yeah, you're right. And of course, the expression that he's using for people that don't know, set down. That's what he's supposed to do when he curls. Mm -hmm. It's called sitting down. And he he waited for a long time. Pitch back. They're going to throw it because it was given backwards. That's Nune at the 30, 25, at the 20, and finally is shoved out of bounds around the 28-yard line. Eric Carey on the stop with a little trickeration by Legadu Nune. Well, he had Gerard Rab wide open on the post. And he just didn't trust it, Ron. That looks better than throwing yeah. oh, into no. traffic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look he what he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He should be really upset with a guy when he pulls it down. So he handled it. Yeah. Zabransky did. Then uh, Dryston James. And, and then he pitched it back to Legado Nune. And they have it with a first down at the 18-yard line. Here's Johnson again. Has five, has ten. He's going to score it. He'll take it the distance, and it is an 18-yard touchdown. His fourth running touchdown of the night. And the Aggies have a player shaken up back at the 15-yard line. That's Hernishan. Strong side, out, uh, inside linebacker. showing that he uh, has a leg injury and you can see that the young man is in a lot of pain right now as uh, his head coach Hal Mummy comes over to uh, to talk with the youngsters the trainers are there and uh, the referee in tonight's ball game Frank White comes over to check as well as you look at Johnson four touchdowns in this ball game this evening and I mean Somebody on the sideline said after New Mexico State scored, I want you to score in this series. You talk about just workmanlike. Wow. How much do you want to bet that uh, Sean Kugler, the offensive line coach, challenged his guys? Watch the right tackle, Woodruff. Just, it doesn't take much. Just come off of it. He sees McManigal, the linebacker, coming in. Just good vision, and, and that, that's just good offensive line play, Ron. When you see the running back about to run through, just come off and nick him. Well, Hernishan being helped off the field. We'll get a report on him as the extra point attempt is uh, about to come. And did Montgomery miss this? Yeah, he missed it wide right. So I'll tell you, that's one of the very few things that has not gone right for the Broncos tonight. So we'll take a timeout. Johnson, four rushing touchdowns tonight. This one, 18 yards. We'll be right back. Boise State University. Where you see blue, we see Idaho's largest university. A metropolitan research university of distinction. Located in one of the West's most dynamic cities. A place of science and business. A place of nature and art. When you look beyond the blue, you can see the future. The new you. Boise State University. in the stands no one watching go ahead hit the showers you did good good is respectable good is admirable good is good there's nothing wrong with good but it's not great be great play up the western athletic conference so we are back. The missed extra point. Uh, really, the only bad mark against Boise tonight, 27 to 7. That's the reason for the odd number. And I mean, in numbers in the ball game, that they already have in 30 plays, 258 yards. It doesn't take you very long to figure out that is over eight yards per try and whatever they've done. Well, Ian Johnson the other day when we spoke with him, and he's had all four of those are his tonight. By That's the right. Way. That's right. He's just such a smart running back. He can really explain what he's seen. Kick picked up at the 32 and now is going to be stopped at the 34 yard line and let's check back in the studio with Reese Davis. Ron coming up on the Pontiac performance halftime report. We'll have more fallout from the ugly incident between Florida International and Miami last night. We'll hear from Larry Coker. Also give you the latest BCS standings. In fact, 
the debut of the BCS standings for this year, and several NFL thrillers this afternoon, some mind-bending performances that we'll show you at halftime. Okay, Reese, thanks very much. Our situation here, we have uh, 320 left to play in his opening half. Shovel pass, and this is Williams. Williams is not only going to have the first down, but two more. And then a flag came from way down deep in center field. And let's see what this one's all about. As Jeremiah had a good pickup, and it's going to be holding, called against New Mexico State. And that came all the way from the back judge, Ron. Typically, it'd be coming from the umpire, but that came all the way from behind the defensive backs. Holding on the offense, number two. Ten-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Remains first Akeem down. Jala, well, I started to say it has to be the a receiver, wide receiver yeah. because that thing, if he'd been looking at the interior line, he <laughs> would have needed binoculars. I was going to say he's, he's not uh, following what he should be following if he's throwing in the middle of the offensive line. So it's a six-yard gain, a 10-yard penalty. It's going to be a first and 14 since it comes from the spot of the foul. That's the reason the you see the chain in an odd position for New Mexico State. Quick pass in the flat. There's Jala. Hit immediately and pushed out of bounds by Tadman. That's now 13 straight completions. But you want to see a plus on that uh, side of every completion, right. not an not a minus. Yeah, and they'll, they'll continue to do those little outcuts. Uh, what they're hoping is eventually the cornerback will slip or try to cut underneath of it, miss it, and then you'll end up with a 10 or 15 yard run. So he picked up about three in the play. And it's going to be a second down and 11. Here comes pressure. He's going to be sacked. And that is Corey Hall. Captain, middle linebacker, and I'll tell you, Corey has an interception tonight, and I can see why they, all the superlatives are, are, you know, about him. You know, this is not that difficult a blitz to pick up, Ron. And the center just laid out of his stance. James Farrelly, who was an offensive tackle last year in junior college, just laid out of his stance, and Hall just runs right by. He's not the fastest guy in the world, Ron, but he, boy, he's, he's football fast, you know. Oh. He may not run the fastest 40, but when the ball is snapped, he's really moving. So with his third down, they got to take this one all the way out to the 44 if they keep the drive alive. Pressure, deep throw, going to be intercepted at the 49-yard line. He was looking for Dubois, and now a couple of late flags have come in. And let's see if they're rescued by defensive holding called on the play. Tadman is the man who made the interception. Holding defense, go. so there you go. I was going to say, Chase Holbrook has looked awfully good to miss by that much. Yeah, and that's exactly the reason why. And, of course, mm -hmm. that penalty carries with it an automatic first down. So uh, a big break for New Mexico State at 138 left until halftime. Holding on the defense, number eight. That's a 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Skandrick is the man who was called for holding. And Coach Peterson, obviously not pleased with that. They had a turnover and now not an opportunity to take advantage. They have 14 first half points off turnovers. And a much different defense this year for Boise State under new coordinator Justin Wilcox. Playing a lot more zone than they've ever played. And some of these guys still adjusting to that. Holbrook and a shotgun. Boise shows blitz off the top and here they come. And boy, does he take a shot as the ball is thrown. Caught between the two defenders and Dubois is going to take it the distance. Touchdown, New Mexico State. yards in the pass play. Corey Hall is the man who was coming right up the middle, and I'm not so sure. We'll take a look at it. I'm not so sure that Corey should not have had a flag thrown on helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact just as the ball was delivered. Joe Montgomery. A Pratt, I think, to attempt the extra point, knocks it home. 
Cannon Sounds on the far sideline, just above the 50-yard line, and let's take another look at it. Well, Dubois just makes up for that drop he had earlier in the game. Remember that throw there? That was an awfully hard hit. And it also was yeah. a headgear to the chin. I agree. I'm, I'm surprised that no flag was thrown on that play. But the cornerback, Skandrick, never turned and found the ball. Ron, you find that with young players. Skandrick, just a sophomore, a true sophomore at that. Ball's in the air. He never turns to find it. And the safety, Alexander, late to get over there. And Alexander, the safety, he's got to clean that up, Ron. If you're late getting there as a safety, and Alexander just making the change over to cornerback or from cornerback this year, if you're late getting there, at least make the tackle. Dubois, by the way, is out of uh, Colonia, New Jersey. His dad was his high school coach. And the, the coaches say the book on him, first of all, say he's a very good player. He's also a very good student. Gets it done in the classroom as well. What a nice play on the ball. But your, def your, your defensive backs has, have got to find the ball as well. It hung up there a little bit on Holbrook. He took a shot right in the chin. 24 of 32, two, 223 yards. He's come off the mat, hasn't he, Ron? He didn't look very good in those first two drives, but he found a little groove. 27 to 14. Pratt will kick it off. This one to the far side, one yard deep in the end zone. It's going to be Scott. Hit at the 15 and falls forward all the way out to the 20-yard line. So that's where Boise will take it over. They got 76 seconds to work with. And right now for Boise State, three timeouts, minute 16, and a senior quarterback. Get it going. You don't want to be comfortable. Uh, your, your quarterback's only thrown two interceptions all year. He's only turned it over twice. P pull it off. Let him go for this with three timeouts. Because remember one thing as we are just about at halftime. Peretta in the ball game. New Mexico State has not allowed a point in the third quarter defensively all year. Get it going. Uh, yeah, a little surprise that they call the draw. You have a senior quarterback, Ron. I, I think you'd be in the hurry-up shotgun and let Zabransky go a little bit. Well, you sh but you certainly don't want to make a mistake because 45 seconds is an eternity to the Aggie offense. Going to throw it here on second down. Zabransky running, running, going to have to run this one, steps out of bounds. I, I agree you don't want to make a mistake, but I think Zabransky has proven to at least give him that chance. He's all, he threw a lot of picks last year. He had 16 interceptions, but only two so far this year. Brewer is the man who forced him out of bounds. And now let's see what the selection is for Boise here with a third down, and they need to take it to the 30-yard line. Vinny Peretta in the ball game at tailback again. Now remember one thing, he catches the ball extremely well. Here he goes in motion. Set him in the slot, and they throw the screen. That is a nice defensive play. Bryson James is hit immediately, and I mean knocked down hard by Jeremy Weeks, and a timeout is called. How Mummy came off that sideline as fast as he could as soon as Weeks made the tackle, and he is upset. He feels like they cost him a couple of seconds before they got that timeout. They had all three of them. Mm -hmm. Top 20 losses yesterday. <laughs> Iowa loses to Indiana. This is a huge emotional win for this Indiana team. Look at them up in the stands after that ball game. And why not? Vanderbilt knocks off Georgia. Georgia lost to Tennessee last week. Probably should have lost Ole Miss the week before that. Missouri loses at Texas A&M. And, of course, all of those losses helping Boise State climb up the poles, which they'll need. And now a very dangerous kick to a dangerous punt return. We have 27 seconds showing on the clock. This is the first punt by Boise tonight. Williams is the deep man. And as we have mentioned, you need a good coverage kick. He is the fastest man on the New Mexico State team. And on that one, maybe a little mistake on his part. you got to catch Come it. Come up and get it. Yeah. So, 19 seconds left as that punt ate up eight seconds off the clock. 
And now Holbrook has to be very careful. He's got two timeouts in 19 seconds. Really only time for three, maybe four. Anything underneath, he's got to get a timeout as soon as possible. Cannot take a sack. Quick out pass. Got that from two Williams. He's coming down the sideline. They didn't get him out of bounds until around the 49-yard line. So that's going to be a gain of 14 yards. David Shields defensively for the Broncos. And a mistake by Boise State. They lost contain to the outside. Now you're getting to a place where you might have three plays, Ron, but, but two's probably about right. I think you try to pick up 10 or 15 yards and then see if you can't get one towards the end zone. The stadium clock shows 12 seconds left until halftime. Holbrook delivers, got a man. It is caught, and he got out of bounds. And yes, he did make the reception before he got knocked out. Chris Williams, there are six ticks left on the clock. I don't think he could take a chance here. New Mexico State's going to call a timeout. I think he, don't you go for the field goal right here? Well, they haven't had much luck, though, Ron. We, Matt Pratt's already missed one, which makes him two for six on the season. And this timeout may help the officials to make sure that this was a, yeah, that was a catch. What a great job by Williams. But Pratt has been not very good, so I would not be surprised at all 